Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm going to do another one of those videos where I talk about some of my older artwork that you can't see here on YouTube. I've done that with graphite pencil drawings and some of my older colored pencil drawings. And now I'm going to do that uh, with a slightly different type of drawings where I went through a series of drawings uh, where I used nothing but a single pencil. In these drawings I only used a black colored pencil and nothing else. I went through this phase where I experimented and I wanted to use only a black colored pencil and I found that a black colored pencil is a very powerful drawing tool and I'm going to share some of that artwork with you. I'm going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of a black colored pencil. I'm going to critique uh, my artwork and reminisce a little bit and it might be interesting, so stick around. This was the first drawing I did using nothing but a black colored pencil. It was my portrait of Johnny Depp wearing the sunglasses. And before I say a few words about the drawing itself, let me just say uh, which pencil I used for these drawings. In most of the drawings I used a Faber-Castell color grip black colored pencil. I also used a Faber-Castell polychromos black color pencil. I may have used some other brands but all of these drawings were done using nothing but a black color pencil. Uh, I only used graphite pencils uh, to do a little bit of sketching. Uh, for that I mostly used a 2H or an HP pencil but for the entire drawing process and the shading I used nothing but a black color pencil. Now you may be wondering why did I uh, choose to switch to this approach? Uh, why would I draw only with a black color pencil? It was just a phase which lasted almost a year and I have to tell you I produced some very nice looking drawings during this phase and a black color pencil is a very very useful tool once you get used to it. And why did I switch to it? Well, I kind of got tired of drawing with a graphite pencil and I got tired of using multiple grades of graphite pencils because for most of my drawings I would have to use at least four or five. And another thing which I didn't like was the graphite shine. Uh, it was kind of difficult to build up areas of darker value and uh, you would always get a certain amount of graphite shine and uh, the darkest darks didn't look quite as dark as I wanted them. So I thought that a black colored pencil would be a great tool for that. And this was my first experiment in that technique. I picked this reference photo because I thought that it wouldn't be too challenging and because there were large black areas where the black colored pencil would really excel. And the reason why I didn't think that it would be too challenging was because Johnny Depp is wearing sunglasses here and I wouldn't have to worry about the eyes and the likeness. So I mostly focused on the hair and the facial structure and I think I achieved some very nice looking texture on the skin which I, which I was surprised with and I realized that a black color pencil would also be great for shading as well as producing a variety of textures. After that uh, fairly simple portrait I decided to challenge myself with something a lot more complex and this scene is very complex. It's a drawing of a racehorse. Lots of action in it, um, lots of movement and a nice detailed background as well. It was a uh, challenging drawing but it turned out really well. I was happy with the way the horse's musculature turned out and also another thing that is very important to notice is how you can use a black color pencil to draw these small fine details and create these small, small uh, fine areas of um, contrast like on the horse's gear and uh, on some of the uh, muscles and details on the horse's head and you can do that because a black colored pencil can be sharpened just as well as a graphite pencil and in order to achieve a range of value you have to vary the amount of pressure with a black colored pencil so that's a main difference in drawing with a black colored pencil uh, from drawing with a graphite pencil. With a graphite pencil uh, you create a range of value mostly by switching to darker pencils. Here you have to vary the amount of uh, 
the amount of uh, black colored pencil you apply to a particular area and you also have to vary the amount of pressure that you use in certain areas. The next drawing is a drawing of an athlete. This is Usain Bolt, the famous Jamaican sprinter and the world record holder. And it was uh, done on uh, Master's Touch sketching paper as were the previous ones. Uh, the size was about 8 times 11 inches and the challenge here was achieving likeness in his face because the the face is slightly smaller it's a slightly smaller drawing but the rest of the uh, the rest of the body I didn't really have a problem with and uh, another thing which I found with a black colored pencil is that you can also draw some very light and smooth backgrounds and you can use a black colored pencil to create uh, areas of lighter value and create some very smooth transitions as long as you use the proper tools and for this I mostly used a q-tip and I found that a q-tip works wonders when blending a black colored pencil uh, but another thing that I have to mention is that with uh, a black colored pencil just like with any colored pencil you do need a paper that has a little bit of tooth in order to be able to blend and layer uh, better Here's a female portrait. This is my drawing of Winona Ryder. And another type of portrait where there is a lot of contrast and where a black color pencil proved to be very useful. I like the amount of contrast on the hair and the eyes. The only thing that I'm not really entirely happy with uh, when I look back is the amount of shading I did on the chin and the nose. Um, those areas ended up looking just a little bit too flat so maybe I should have done a little bit more shading around the nose and on the tip of the chin but other than that uh, I thought that the portrait turned out really nice and I was pretty happy with the fact that I can achieve uh, such nice smooth transitions uh, when shading with a black colored pencil so as I was experimenting with a black colored pencil I kept pushing myself and uh, throwing more uh, more and more challenging drawings at myself and this was another challenging drawing and uh, here the biggest challenge uh, was achieving this nice range of textures obviously his shirt was also very very complicated but I think that what's uh, the best thing about this drawing is the range of textures uh, on his skin and on his weapons and the shield because uh, the shirt really looks like it's made out of cloth uh, the X really looks like it's made out of wood, leather and metal and the shield really looks like it's made out of wood. So I found that a black colored pencil is very flexible and uh, can allow you to create a nice variety of textures to imitate various types of uh, materials. This drawing was inspired by The Hobbit. It's a drawing of Bilbo Baggins in Mirkwood. And this was the first drawing where I uh, encountered some serious limitations when drawing with a black colored pencil. The main problem here was not the face or some elements of the background. The main problem were these larger black areas and especially transitions between these darker areas and lighter areas. These transitions are very easy to do in charcoal, but with a black colored pencil, which doesn't blend at all or hardly blends at all, uh, this was a problem, so I needed to vary the amount of pressure and I needed to layer and cross hatch in order to create smoother transitions. This was a very slow process, so this was the beginning of uh, me realizing that a black colored pencil, as impressed as I was with it, did have some limitations and that there were some drawings which were simply better to do in some other types of media. But the drawing turned out pretty well. I was happy with the background and as you can see I put in some cobwebs and a giant spider in the background. Here I wanted to do a drawing of an animal so I did this close-up of a cow. It's a funny looking drawing but uh, the interesting thing about it is the level of detail and the amount of texture on the cow's fur. This is where the black color pencil proved to be very very useful. This portrait is slightly larger because it's taking up uh, more of the paper, but the paper itself was 
of smaller size. This was done uh, on uh, Fibriano sketching paper and the portrait is that of Adriano Lima, the supermodel. The clothes were a little bit boring to draw because of these transitions uh, between uh, darker and lighter value which are kind of difficult to do in a black colored pencil as I mentioned previously but the uh, portrait itself went pretty smoothly and I was happy with the way her face turned out. I was especially happy with uh, with this great contrast I achieved around the eyes and on the hair. Her face turned out pretty well. And here's a drawing of El Pacino in Carlito's Way and it's a nice scene to draw but again very challenging mostly because of the limitations of the black colored pencil. The face and the hair went pretty smoothly. The background wasn't too difficult either but the main problem of course was his leather jacket because of these uh, transitions from very dark value to these uh, shiny highlights. Uh, this was kind of difficult to achieve and um, I just found that a black colored pencil isn't really the perfect tool for, do for drawing uh, clothes and especially these types of drawings but somehow I managed to cope and as I always say you can always adapt to your tools you can always find a way uh, you can always find solutions but sometimes uh, those solutions uh, just take a little bit more effort and a little bit more time here's another smaller sketch this is René Artois a character from the British sitcom Allo Allo I thought that he was a very funny very nice character to draw and I like his facial expression here I also achieved some nice texture on his skin. Uh, I also did a little bit of shading on the background so that the white shirt would stand out against the background. Another smaller sketch where I did a little bit less blending. This is my drawing of Joey from the Friends. I liked his goofy expression here and it's like a vignette. I uh, left some of those lines. I didn't do too much blending. I like the way it turned out so I kind of left it at that. And here's a slightly more detailed and larger portrait. This is one of the most detailed portraits I've ever done. As a matter of fact, uh, my drawing of Robin Williams with this uh, go goofy expression. Uh, the main uh, part here, the, the, the best part about this portrait I think is the skin. I really put in a lot of effort into the into the texture of the skin and I allowed the black colored pencil to work for me. I just used uh, uh, cross hatching and a tapered stroke shading from varying angles and uh, that kind of allowed me to create a nice looking texture that eventually ended up resembling the human skin. I thought that it was a pretty good portrait and uh, the transition between the uh, between the darker hair and the slightly grayish hair around the ear also came out pretty well. And here's another detailed portrait. I did a little bit less work on the shirt, just uh, created some suggestions of folds and faded it downwards to, uh, towards the edge of the paper like a vignette. But I did quite a bit of work on the face and the hair. I did a lot of scribbling on the hair to achieve that texture and as for the face I simply achieved a slightly darker tone by uh, doing a little bit more cross hatching and applying a little bit more pressure. So that's the thing about shading with a black colored pencil. In order to build up the value all you have to do is put down more of the black colored pencil or change the angle at which you're holding the pencil and apply just a little bit more pressure and that way you can achieve areas of darker value. I've done uh, quite a few drawings of Rocky Balboa and this I believe was the first one. It was done in a black colored pencil and I achieved some nice texture on the hat and the jacket and the face uh, was shaded pretty well. I, I think it's a pretty good portrait if there's anything I don't like about it, I think maybe the nose could have been shaded a little bit better. Uh, maybe my uh, reference photo was also a little bit flat. 
because it was a black and white photo that appeared to be a little bit overexposed maybe I could have picked a slightly better one but I probably should have done a little bit more shading around the nose but overall I was pretty happy with the uh, with the way the portrait came out and also I achieved a nice contrast around the around that chain there and a nice shadow under the rim of the hat. Here's my portrait of Gerard Butler. It's a very detailed portrait on a slightly smaller size. Here I wanted to push myself to achieve a very detailed portrait on a smaller size paper and um, the best thing about it I think is the texture uh, of this short beard and of course the very nice small reflections in the eyes where I achieved a nice contrast between the pupil and the reflection and the rest of the eye. And there's also a nice shadow uh, from his nose on the left side of the face. This was a large uh, drawing and a very very detailed one, a drawing of Jerome Bettis. Uh, here I really uh, really like the amount of contrast especially on the helmet. The background was a little bit challenging because I uh, tried to achieve uh, an out of focus smoother background. In some places maybe there ended up being a little bit too much texture but I think that overall it's not too distracting because the main subject is so large and um, so detailed. There's really uh, lots of detail on this helmet and also if you look under the helmet uh, lots of shading on the face as well. One of the most uh, realistic drawings I've ever done, no doubt, and this was done on a larger format as well. And here's a very detailed and realistic drawing of an animal, uh, the sleepy corgi. Uh, my drawing of this uh, nice looking dog and uh, the eyes are probably the best part but I also did some nice work on the fur as well. And uh, here I used a brush for softening uh, the texture of that fur a little bit and to do the blending and it worked out pretty well even with a black color pencil. And you can also see some subtle reflections on the floor. So that's also a nice touch I think. This was one of the largest uh, portraits done in a black color pencil because uh, the rock's face here, and this is by the way Dwayne Johnson the rock, uh, his face is taking up much of the paper. I think you, I used one of the Strathmore uh, papers for this and the texture of the paper really helped me a lot when drawing his face uh, because uh, I, produce a ver I produced a very nice texture of the skin. The main challenge here was the fact that um, the light was coming from different directions and there was uh, a little bit of reflected light coming from the other side on the left side of the face. So I think I handled that pretty well and um, the mouth and the teeth maybe could have been a little bit better but the rest of the the rest of the portrait is super detailed and very very realistic. And here is probably my favorite drawing I've ever done with a black colored pencil. This is a drawing of two funny characters from the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, Regetti and Pintel. A very detailed drawing in terms of textures, especially on their faces and the clothes. Uh, they, uh, they both have a very uh, rough looking skin and tattered clothes, so th there, were, there were lots of interesting details there to draw. I thought that a black colored pencil did a really good job. It took a little bit of patience for this, but uh, from the beginning of this drawing I, I, I exhibited a lot more patience than I normally do in most of my drawings. That's why this drawing ended up being so detailed. But the, th the thing that I also like a lot is the amount of contrast between the light side and the shadow side of their faces and of course their expressions are super funny. Uh, here I did a drawing of a cat uh, that I often watched on Instagram 
a funny looking cute uh, cat. Uh, here I wanted to push myself to draw some fur in a black color pencil. I think it turned out we well, but uh, maybe it could have been a little bit darker. I maybe should have uh, put in a little bit more value. But the shadow turned out nice and the eyes also look pretty good. And this was my second drawing of Jon Snow, my first drawing of him in a black colored pencil. I wanted to focus on the face and the expression. And uh, the hair wasn't that difficult to do with a black colored pencil, but I had to work backwards. First I did all of the shading and all of the drawing uh, with a black colored pencil, and then I simply used a hard pencil eraser to, el to erase this hi uh, these highlights and to give the hair a little more depth and structure. So, um, a black colored pencil isn't really easy to erase, but here I found that I didn't really need such strong highlights and I just needed to erase a little bit in order to create a realistic looking hair. But other than that, I think that the portrait went pretty smoothly and, um, and the black colored pencil proved to be a very good tool once again. This is probably one of the best uh, female portraits I've ever done and it's my drawing of Teresa Palmer the actress I really uh, like the way the hair turned out and by the way I only did the sketch uh, with a graphite pencil but I did the rest of it with a black color pencil the hair was done with a black color pencil and you can see how nice uh, smooth uh, lines you can achieve with a black colored pencil and a little bit of uh, blending with a brush but the best part of this portrait, of course, are the eyes, uh, where I achieved some nice contrast and some beautiful looking reflections. And uh, there are also some nice transitions uh, on the forehead and uh, around the cheekbones. And another uh, very nice effect that I was able to achieve was around uh, her uh, left shoulder, uh, where I created a blurry edge so that it looks like uh, the, the face is in focus and the shoulder is slightly out of focus. So one of, the, one of the best female portraits I've done, no doubt. And here's another drawing of an actress. This is Jessica Alba in this provocative uh, pose and uh, black fishnets. The, I, here I faced the f same challenge when drawing with a black color pencil. Uh, this transition between these very dark areas and slightly lighter areas proved to be a challenge because uh, a black color pencil is very difficult to blend. And also I may have produced a little bit too much texture on the pantyhose as well. I wanted to make that a little bit smoother so I needed to put in a little bit more effort to make these transitions between areas of lighter and darker value a little bit uh, smoother. I, need, I needed to spend a little bit of extra time on that, but other than that it's a fairly simple drawing. I like the way it turned out, but like I said, because of these limitations of a black colored pencil it took a little bit more time than it ought to have, because if I tried to do this in charcoal it would have been probably a lot quicker. And here's another a very detailed portrait. This is my drawing of Brad Pitt. And again, uh, some nice contrast between areas of lighter and darker value. But what's interesting about this portrait, and I did the same thing uh, in the drawing of Teresa Palmer as well. Um, a lot of people, when they want to draw people with blonde hair or light hair, they usually uh, shade the background so that the blonde hair would stand out uh, here I decided to uh, use a completely different approach and leave the leave the background completely white and do a light shading on the on the blonde hair. So you can see that uh, even when you don't shade the background, you can still make the blonde hair stand out against the background, and you can create some nice contrast. But of course, uh, the best part of the portrait, I think, is the amount of texture I achieved on the skin. I managed to capture the likeness pretty well, I think, and uh, I like his pensive expression in this, uh, in this picture. The next drawing is a portrait of Jim Morrison. I uh, did a lot of work on the hair. Uh, I think 
I, I think I probably should have tried to do a little bit more blending on the hair. Um, maybe, I don't know, some people praise the hair, they said that it, look, it turned out really well. I think that um, I maybe could have made it a little bit smoother. Uh, the face was done pretty well and uh, I also did a little bit of work on the chest by adding some chest hair and some other details uh, on his skin. So it's a pretty detailed drawing but like I said I, I just think that maybe the hair and especially the shadows uh, under, the, under the jaw and around the neck could have been made a little bit smoother. Maybe I should have uh, g gone over that with a brush. Maybe I should have done this in charcoal. I don't know, but I think it's a very nice detailed portrait. And here's a drawing of Billy Idol. He uh, here you can see uh, once again uh, that I like drawing uh, white hair or blonde hair against the white background and that I have no problem with it. But the best part of this drawing, of course, is the amount of texture on the face and these uh, lovely shadows under the eye sockets and under the nose and under the jaw and on the neck. So some very nice shadows and a very nice contrast between the light side of the face and the shadow side of the face. In terms of the amount of contrast this is I think one of the best drawings I've ever done. And I'm gonna finish with this drawing of Arnold Schwarzenegger as Conan the Barbarian. It's by far one of the best and most realistic drawings I've ever done. Uh, there are so many good things about it. Uh, the textures, the likeness, uh, the, the amount of contrast, and of course these beautiful shadows uh, coming from the arms on his body. Uh, just lots of lots of beautiful details and also a nice out of focus background with just a few suggestions of clouds and some grass in the back. Uh, this is probably the best that I could produce with a black colored pencil and here you can really see the power of a single black colored pencil as a drawing tool. Uh, you can see that you don't really need uh, uh, different grades of graphite pencils in order to achieve a beautiful range of value and some nice shadows and transitions and a great amount of contrast. And I'm gonna leave you here. I hope you liked this video and I hope you liked some of my older drawings. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you haven't subscribed already don't forget to subscribe. If you want to see longer videos and tutorials don't forget to check out my Patreon channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.